This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So, I hope you are aware. So, this training we know, free training which is part of uh, yes, yeah. So, we started on Guruji birthday date like May 1st and then uh, almost uh, we covered almost like more than 20 hours sessions and some sessions we went with some long hours as well. So let's see first what we actually we covered all the like uh, last sessions and then we'll go ahead and see the today topic what we are going to cover. Okay. So the day one, we started with very basics. So we, we discussed the differences between programming languages and scripting languages. What is compiler? What is interpreter? And then generally the programming languages, how we write and then how many lines are generally required to print even one single statement and with comparing with here like uh, python we have observed that python is very easy just a minute Yeah, so we covered that concept first and then basics and then we started the differences between Python 2 point versions and 3 point versions. We understood that and then how to install Python. So there are a lot of Python distributions, right? So we discussed the different distributors. But for our training, we installed Python from python.org. So that is the official community, I told. And then we understood what is variable, how to define variables, types of variables. And then after that, we discussed complete differences between compiler and interpreter in detail. And then also we understood how Python it works. So basically writing the Python script and Windows operating system and Linux operating system both we covered. And then in the day six we discussed more about ID is how to work with PyCharm and uh, what is input function typecasting in detail about mutable and immutable things. What is mutable object? What is immutable object? And what are the different types of mutable objects, immutable objects available in Python we discussed. And then we started reserved keywords. So which we cannot use as a variable name or function name, right? Or method name, those things we discussed. So how to check the result keywords, two different ways we understood. And this is the syntax here in the day seven itself, we covered that. Whenever if you are using any module, so first we should import the module and then how to check the properties, module properties how to check the documentation in the module. So these things we covered here. And then we discussed in detail deep dive. So deep dive about a string. So we understood strings like how to define string, how to access the characters based on the index, reverse index. 
and also we observed this is an immutable object and iteration possible how to iterate each and every character and then all the string methods we discussed so these are the string methods right and then we started operators so all the list of operators one by one we discussed arithmetic operators relational operators logical operators assignment string concatenation repetition membership operator identity right all the operators and uh, session 10 i think we covered with a different uh, laptop that's the reason not available here and then after that we started conditional statements the flow controls like we have a simple if if else later if next if in python and here we understood indentation the importance of indentation so indentation must in python when we write these conditional statements and uh, how many spaces need to provide this all the things we discussed based on which guidelines we followed anyone here which guidelines we followed so i explained that so python generally the best practices we followed some guidelines can anyone answer here can you hear me guys so we have 34 people now so can anyone answer that from where we checked <clears throat> now uh, pip we are using to install third party module so that is a pip right not asking to install any third party modules i'm asking the python best practices the guidelines we follow while writing any python code i said that we follow that best practices all the times example is here indentation i'm not asking how many spaces need to provide i'm asking that where we actually check this all the best practices not even single person yeah it's a pep guidelines right so i told right so see most of the sessions we opened this and uh, we discussed it if you open python.org right so python.org here yeah and i told in the documentation there is a pep index and if you go down here we can see style guide for python code so this is the one we followed every almost all the sessions while writing the indentation based on this only we understood right and we used for naming convention everything we discussed based on this so this is the best practice we follow right this is more important when we write any python code in real time you must aware of it this guideline says and if you if you check here see this is the one right we copied naming conventions while creating any name i explained that snake case things and then this all the things right yes or no yeah okay guys remember this you got a 
idea now yes sir can you confirm yeah okay and then after that we actually discussed uh, more about uh, in detail later if and the next day if later if we used how we can create a menu programming multiple use cases we discussed here and then we started loops concept so in the loops we discussed uh, we have while loop and for loop while loop we are using for conditions purpose and then for loop we are using for iterations so what is iterable what what are the iterable objects available those things we covered right and for loop we cannot simply use for any value so we should aware of it what are the iterable objects available in python only for that you can use for loop to make any integer value as a iterable object we discussed range function and then we started collections like list what is list what is tuple what is dictionary what is set in detail list methods tuple methods dictionary methods set methods all the things we discussed so if you see i told dictionary more important if you want to understand some of the advanced concepts like working with json these all the things so if you are good with the dictionaries then it will be easy now for today like for the json concepts and then uh, after that we started a file handling concept so means how to read the data from the file so you should aware of this concept as well if you want to work with json so means how to read the data from the file how to write data to the file how to open so we covered with open and then directly open off the file name these all the things we discussed and uh, the seek method tell method importance how to move the current cursor position to beginning of the file and tell method we discussed here right and then and then we started modules before modules we we discussed in detail functions what are the built in functions available how to check all the built in functions use a defined function that is a custom function how to create our own custom function with the df and we understood creating a functions how to call the function with arguments without arguments and then the importance of functions we discussed the scope of variables local scope global scope we discussed what is local variable what is global variable how to define any variable inside the function as a global with the global keyword we discussed those things and then we started modules <clears throat> so i told this is more important like how to use module how to create our own module we covered here not only just module we understood in detail what are the built in modules available where we can check that so built in modules it comes with the language so we discuss that and uh, use a defined models which is a custom model so means if you want to create your own model how to create and third party models platform related so we have a repository called pypi right so this is the one 
all the modules available in this repository. This is what we understood. So third party modules available in this repository. So we simply use pip command to install any module. So example we discuss something like if you want to work with AWS. AWS automation with Python. AWS SDK which is Boto3. Similar way if you want to work with Oracle the module name is CX underscore Oracle like that we discussed. And BS4 which is a beautiful SOAP module for web scrapping. And uh, we discussed in detail whenever if you are using module there are two syntaxes we use one is import module name and then module name dot property name so here it is import module name module name dot property name and second syntax the second syntax is from module name import property name then you can use directly the property this two syntaxes in detail we discussed and while using these two syntaxes we we understood with the combination of built-in modules user defined modules and third party modules so three modules i covered in one example right if you check here example so the math module okay here it is so arithmetic the model we created our own model and we used this arithmetic model first right and then later we used here arithmetic model which we created that is a custom model and the math model which is a built-in model statistics built-in model we use this and we have installed pandas i told how to install this is a third party model right so all the syntaxes we observed module syntaxes same no matter whether it is a built-in or third party or something pandas which is uh, maybe user defined model so user defined model we created a custom model built in models it com it is coming with the python right so once if you install python these models will get with python third party model means the platform related we install this model so we observed how to use these modules with the syntaxes so syntaxes are same that's what we understood so in detailed modules concept we covered and this is the more and more and more important in Python. Because if you want to automate any particular platform related in real time, you should aware of that platform knowledge first. And then you should know how to use that model. What is the model name? So for example, see this repository having there are thousands of modules not thousands you can see here like how many files you can see it's almost uh, one crore right one crore 12 lakhs 88,201 file that means this many file each file is one module basically so this many modules available it is impossible to remember all the names it is impossible to remember so based on your requirement which platform you are using let's say now you want to automate something for database and in the databases again there are n number of databases we have a mysql sybase db2 mongodb oracle or sql server mariadb there are different databases so in your project, which database you are using, that is your first job. You need to first find out what database you are using, which database it is. Is it Oracle or Sybase or DB2? 
and then now the second job is what like okay i want to automate this mysql example i don't want to log in every time mysql you know the database with the mysql credentials and then i don't want to run all the whatever the sql queries manually i want to automate that using with python so you should find out first what is the module for mysql so how to find out you need to search like in the google just search it python plus mysql you can type like this so let's say you are searching for oracle python plus oracle let's say you are searching for AWS Python plus AWS you will get the module name it will give you suggestions what are the modules available of course maybe we will get some third party communities here but still that is okay you can try to open this and see I am trying to open W3 schools geeks for geeks but there is an official community as well for MySQL right it is always best practice check in the original community as well so this is the original community here click on this link so why we are searching here i am trying to find out what is the module name for mysql when i use python how to connect to this mysql database so there should be a module this mysql community already developed and uploaded in the repository called pypi so we are finding out that module name now and you know generally the programming languages if you are using like c language c++ or java so c or c++ we use something odbc that is actually drivers to connect the database and java it uses jdbc so jdbc is actually what it is a it is a driver now if you see this is for mysql or some database java database connectivity so you need to first whenever if you want to connect with java jdbc is mandatory so this is java database connectivity we call it as odbc is mandatory for c or c++ but while using python for the databases we are not separately concentrating on odbc jdbc we are only concentrating on the module so this module once if you install this module itself is a driver we can say that means it is actually internally the code it implemented for that so you no need to separately install any drivers so the module itself now it's a driver so if someone asks is odbc is required not required you can simply use this mysql module it has everything so that is the reason first we observed what is module if you know that concept whatever the platform no matter it it will be very easy so only thing you have to find out see as i told there are one cr plus modules so we need to find out what is the model how to get that so i am just searching here you can see connector python versions connector python installation connector python coding example maybe you can just check this coding examples related now you can see here it provided there is a module called import mysql connector so means this is the module we should use for mysql so it may be modular package so when we discussed package also right so what is package see here we covered that it's a collection of modules most of the times if you are working with any database uh, modules that is a package only so we can say database packages it's a collection of modules basically so we also discussed what is package how to create package what is init file what is the importance of init file these all the things we discussed already right so now if we check here let me find out what is the module so this is the package name or module name and then where we checked now this is an official community my like a mysql community but now 
I want to check in other third party websites also is it using the same name so I'm just checking in W3 schools now it is saying that install MySQL driver and how to install you can see pip install MySQL connector it provided that step and then later you can import and check this MySQL and see if you want to work with MySQL first you need to install the MySQL uh, a database if if you're not aware of see if you are working with some specific platform if that platform is not available in your system or server or laptop how you can work with that right so you need to install mysql in case if you are working with mysql and download it in real time we have a separate database servers then there actually we follow some separate concept but here since i am using same laptop so we need to install this database in case if you want to work with that. Okay, so now so from here we download it and then after that the Python model for MySQL we just observed that there is a module called MySQL connector. So randomly I'm checking for three, four websites. So first I checked in community and then W3 schools and then I checked in something geeks for geeks everywhere it is same, the module name. So what is our job now after installation of, after installing the MySQL, we need to install this package using with pip install and then the package name so it will install from the repository now right so this is how we install and uh, for me like it will be available already because i already installed now i can see requirement already satisfied it is coming that means this model already exists here and uh, how to check this now so you can see pip show and then mysql dot connector right so dot connector so this is the one right so mysql dot connector pip show so means if you install using with pip you can verify this like this and uh, it is saying that okay version is 2.2.9 2.2.9 and uh, summary mysql driver written in python and who is the owner for this see author is Arkil or its uh, affiliates and then home page is this dev.mysql.com you can see these all the details basically and if you want to verify whether this model is working or not, you can verify import, go to the interactive mode, import mysql.connector, not getting any error, that means this is working now. So this is the first step, we have to install the model and then how to connect those other things, different story. Now same way. Whatever like you are actually working, let's say now for example you want to automate the Linux administration part. If you need to find out what are the modules required for that. So basically we use something OS module, subprocess module like that. But I want to check Linux automation, Python with Linux automation. You try like this then you will get idea. Python with the Linux or <coughs> you search whatever, whatever the keyword Linux automation with Python. So, you can see something, the modules, you can go through this third party websites because for Linux we don't have separate community page like that. But you can just check what are the modules actually using.
see the models here. It provided different models. But you can you can see whether really these are required or not. It's a completely Python automation it provided here. It's not only for Linux, okay? It's a complete Python automation. But I'm only looking for Linux. So if you search two, three times like this, you will get idea how to get the model names, those other things. So here is the one you can see there is a model called sys model. Yes, you can use that. And then see there are some other models they use request model, something beautiful soap model. PD, Pandas, Matplotlib with web scrapping and data analysis related. They are writing it. But you know, if you open any script now, you will get it. You will get, you will understand it. Anything. So you can see there is a SMTP related they are using to send email notifications. So you need to install SMTP related module. So that's it. If you install this, then you can you can see how they are writing it. Okay, so again, this is not complete Linux administration related, but they provided some of the models. That's good. You can check like this multiple websites and then you'll get idea what are the models actually using, right? Or some documents if you install. So I'll get it. So generally we use, as I told, OS modules or process model like that we use. But if you search multiple documentations, you'll get idea and uh, you'll understand easily. So you need to find out based on your requirement, what is the model it is supporting for that and then you have to install it. That is the first job we have to do. So now I'm just giving example for a database and then Linux administration or something AWS. I'm not sure which platform you are in. You just try with your platform related models and then you can install and you can try it. If you are good with working with module and it will be easy for anything. Okay, so voice is low. Is that clear now? My voice is okay. Can anyone confirm here? Okay, thank you. Uh, please explain list comprehensions. Okay, fine. So, uh, fine then. So, basically, See, there are a lot of things right in Python. So, it is impossible to complete in one month. But uh, anyway, we planned one month. But we'll also plan one more session, no issues. Maybe next week again, not tomorrow. And then I'll try to complete some concepts today and then I'll go with some, some more concepts list comprehensions right so you're asking list comprehensions so we have for for mutable objects you can write the comprehensions we don't have tuple comprehensions but we have a dictionary comprehensions And we have set comprehensions. So we'll see this, no issues. Then in that case now, 
will go with the regular expressions now regular expressions itself is a vast subject like for me minimum it takes 3 hours to complete regex minimum time because lot of things in regex so you may think why regular expressions important right so let me copy this now anyone has any idea where we use regular expressions what is the importance of regular expressions and uh, yeah validations that is exactly correct see this regular expressions whatever language you are using whatever language let's say for example now we are learning with python simply we can say regular expressions itself is a separate concept like how we understood arithmetic operator arithmetic operations it introduced by someone mathematical related operators right so we use for addition then multiplication like that those operators not implemented by python are not implemented by java but every language uses is using that arithmetic operators right so arithmetic operators are same and every language following the board mass rule everything same concept because all the languages it is following the same rules because that arithmetic operators itself separate it's not related to any programming language the same way regular expressions we call it as a regex regex itself is a separate concept and every language is using that so if you know regex here how to use and then it will be the same in every language whatever language you are writing maybe you are writing with perl or php or shell scripting or java everywhere the concept is same so the purpose of regular expressions simply we can say validations are or we can say that text manipulation so the text manipulation is nothing but i want to search some data and then display the data matching content so if you want to search and display some matching matching data then we use a regular expressions and then patterns pattern matching or you can also use for search and substitute the data and uh, most of the times for any validations validations means what let's say i want to validate a name name validation you may think what is name validation name validation for example okay so anyone has experience here irctc railway reservations anyone reserve like uh, anyone here used that irctc website no one irctc for railway reservations we use right yeah so everyone has experience can anyone tell me while giving the name so it asks right so your name based on aadhar card and something like uh, it it will ask that okay reservation like how many seats so this all the things it will be there so but i'm just only concentrating on name now so did anyone observe that while writing the name how many characters it accepts yeah 
no idea. Minimum of two characters, maximum maximum you just check it irctc name how many characters it accepts anyway, if it is not providing also but generally whenever if you check you'll get idea lot see this 15 character the maximum length name should be restricted to 15 characters Or some website saying 16 characters but if you just check generally it's a based on IRCTC only we got this result 15 characters and minimum two characters and if, if your name actually contains let's say maybe 20 characters or 25 characters very big name it will not allow that that is a validation with regex so it developed with the pearl actually so IRCTC website it is developed with Perl, Perl Regex. So name validation, name validation here, something 2 to 15 character only I want to accept. Minimum 2, one character if you type just A, it's not a valid name basically. So minimum of 2 characters. And I want to maybe maximum can be n number or maximum like IRCTC max 15 characters. I want to write this name. How we can actually accept and also the name should be only alphabet not accept digits not accept special characters so only alphabets and then should accept minimum 2 to 15 so how this validation this is a validation right same way mobile number validation mobile number means you know we are not see again name validation we are not checking from other database we are not checking from other database whether this name is valid or not. No, just it's a regex validation, which means the name, whether it is a valid name or not valid name, different story. It just accepts minimum two characters, maximum 15 characters. That's it. Same way, mobile number validation means it's not verifying mobile is working or not. That is another process like sending some OTP kind of thing like you know with smtp protocol that is another process again that also can do but it's not related to regex i'm only talking about regular expressions now so the mobile number validation for example in india in india mobile numbers and digit number right so mobile number should contain stand digit number should be 10 digit and uh, a 10 digit means let's say if someone is typing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 0. This is also 10 digit. I don't want to accept this series. In India, mobile number generally starts with uh, six or seven or eight or nine. Only this series I want to access. I want to accept. If someone is entering other than the first digit, if it is not 6 or 7 or 8 or 9, should display that enter a valid mobile number. Same way email ID validation, email ID validations. There are a lot of things like vehicle number validations. For example, see, in my website, for example, so whenever, let's say, for example, you are searching for some training, and then we'll get some training institute name. So it asks like name, mobile number, email ID like that. 
for example if i am trying something a and then send so it is asking enter a valid user something enter a valid number some something two characters i entered and then see enter a enter a valid phone number so the mobile number validation here it is simply saying that okay characters not allow only digits but whether it is allowing 10 digits number only that is different matter but it is giving now valid phone number means it's not allowing the characters at this moment you can also see this view pay source here and uh, I am just checking regular expressions, regex you can see somewhere. See this is the regex. So for user mail ID, whenever if that checkbox, whenever if you are entering mail ID, internally it is validating this mail ID pattern. If it is not matches, then it will not accept. Whatever code it is, whether it is a JavaScript or, see it is a JavaScript, but whatever code but concept is same. There is a regular expression now here using for email ID in this website. Right. So, how we can write like that here with Python? So, there is a built in module called RE in Python. We have a module called RE, which is a regular expression module. You can just check import re right if you go to the interactive mode and then just check import re so this is how you can import and dir of re there are properties this many properties we have uh, from here and most of the times we use some of the regular properties we can say like uh, search we use to search and display the data and all the wildcard characters we can use with search and split we use to split based on the pattern sub we are using to substitute like search and substitute the data and match we are using only match from the word wise find all we use to find each and every word from the string like this we use generally we use generally what this property so print the first import re and then print dir of re right And then help of RE you can check for the documentation. This is a module now, regular expression module. And we are understanding here how to use this regular expression module. So I told search and display the data that is a text manipulation. First, we will see that. I am creating a text file here. So, some file name I am creating. Something test 11. Okay. So, in this file, I am just writing some text. And wherever wherever Python matches, I want to read only the those lines, which means seventh line and eighth line. Now, before going to that, you tell me now how to read this test 11.txt file. I want to read that text 11.txt file. So, see. Whenever if you are working with regex or working with some other extension files like JSON null, this is the basic syntax. First, you should know how to read the text file. So, 
let me save this file and save it. Yeah, tell me. So I want to read this test 11 file. What is the syntax? Anyone here? Ping me the syntax. No idea. I guess you guys are not revising then. Right. Hmm. Yeah, with open or open off file name. So this is the syntax we use, right? So I told the best practice use with open because you don't need to close the file object with open. And then file name is what? Test11.txt. Read mode is not required because that is a default mode as some file object here and then I am directly using for loop for i in f4 print i what it prints now it prints the complete file data that is a test11.txt file data so let me run this now python and then day22 underscore script.py now oh, we are getting this data like this now tell me how to delete these new lines here. You can use comma end equal to or you can use strip method, right? So now this is the content. So we know this syntax already we discussed how to read the file. But now what is our requirement? I don't want to read the complete file. I want to search only wherever Python matches. So for this, re.search we use. So we will see what is re.search, re.split, re.sub. Okay. Let's first try to understand this search here, re.search. If you want to use re.search, first you should import, import module re, this is a built-in module. And then I am using now, if re.search if python matches from where, from i. So i is actually contains each and every line, right? So from file object, it is taking each line. And from each line, I'm checking Python matched content. If it is matched, then only I want to print this. Inside if I'm writing this. And rerun again. Now if you check, it's not printing the complete data. It is only printing only Python matched content. So this is the very basic now, right? How to search the matched content. Now, 
we know split method we discussed so the split method we are using to split single string to multiple strings but that is again based on the delimiter yes or no so based on the delimiter we can split single string to multiple strings then what is the use of here in regular expression split any guess see we already know we have a split method in strings we used but again here we are using re dot split is there any difference or same behavior whatever your opinion just let me know is there any different behavior for this now same okay how about others okay now check this for example i am going to the interactive mode okay i am in interactive mode now for example i have a some data the data is like this i have a one string and uh, every language maybe the versions here like it defined something like this python 3 java 5 perl uh six something bash four okay so php some some text i have like this now if you want to split based on any one delimiter or maybe any one specific character it is possible with split method so how we use except dot split based on let's say for example 3 i want to split then we will get this result so based on the 3 it splitted so python and then 3 it splitted here and again php 3 it splitted here then we have a three values now but my question here is it possible to split wherever digit matches using with this method wherever digit matches i want to split now it's not possible the string split method only the specific delimiter what you provided or only specific character what you provided based on that it will split but regular expression split is based on the patterns what is the pattern now wherever digit matches i want to split see now import re and then re dot split what is actually requirement i want to split based on 0 hyphen 9 this is this is one wild card character i want to split wherever 0 to 9 matches you cannot provide this with string split method wherever 0 to 9 matches with regex i am using from where from x wherever 0 to 9 matches i am splitting now see the output wherever digit matches it splitted it can be anything like this let's say now for example in this string here now instead of instead of a digit i have some special characters like this okay so wherever special character matches i want to split now wherever special character matches i want to split so you should aware of what is the wild card for that see i am trying to split now based on the special character so we use this app inside the square bracket means not not digit not lower case not upper case so means other than the digits are alphabet we have only special character so we are saying that split based on the special characters now see the output 
this is called pattern we are applying some pattern and then based on the pattern we are splitting that is the reason in regex also we have a split method i hope you understood now so it's not same what we have in strings the string split method only to split one based on one specific character or delimiter but in regular expression split method we are using to split based on any specific patterns i hope it is clear now okay and then what is re dot sub re dot sub we are using for search and substitute so i want to search here wherever python matches and i want to substitute that with java so i'm commenting this all the lines now multi line comment i want to search python and then substitute with java for that we use sub right so how to use then okay something variable name x equal to re dot sub wherever python matches substitute with java from where from i and then print this x here so wherever python matches i want to replace with java but remaining all the lines i want to print remaining all the text i want to print as it is removing that new line okay now if you check here wherever python matches python replaced with java i i don't think this is the one so i think these two lines are maybe will use some other name something like i'm going to use gcp some google cloud plot some name i'm using python i want to replace with gcp now you can see python replaced with gcp here python replaced with gcp here from this file so for search and substitute we are using this and assume let's say for example i have a capital letters here so when we search something okay. i want to search for based on the ignore case and go and check here import re dir of re so we have a concept of ignore case you can use this or i also we use for ignore case only ignore case okay we need to type as it is comma re dot ignore case it provided like that okay or you can simply use i capital i now you can see it is giving even capital letters if you are not giving ignore case you will not get it you will get only these two lines because python is a case sense to by default what case you provide based on that only display the data okay so this all are fine like we understood how to search and display the data how to search and substitute the data how to search and split the data then how about validations here like mobile number validations something email id validations right name validation so for that you need to know the wild card characters meta characters anchors these all things or meta characters or anchors or identifiers i'm not going to give all wild cards but whatever required now we will discuss okay whatever required now we'll discuss so we have something like character pattern 
word pattern like this and then line pattern. In the character pattern again there are a lot of wildcards but I am just giving only for something relevant to name validation or mobile number validation. Only that part I will explain here. So to understand that we need to know some of the wildcards. What is plus? And then square bracket inside the square bracket hyphen and then curly brackets of m and then curly brackets of m comma n and then just m comma so these characters we should aware of it minimum now what is plus means here plus actually it matches one or more occurrences of preceding okay one or more occurrences of preceding character so what is this one or more let's say if i write a b plus c b is a preceding now b is a preceding So now the plus behavior it works on B. The plus behavior it works on B. That means the B now it can be a 0, it can be a 1 B or it can be a more Bs. For example, A, B, C, A multiple B, C, like this it will accept. If in case if you have this file, see now. I have something like this. Okay, this is the text now. So between A and C, only B matches B one or more, then it accepts. But even if you write multiple Bs, then with some other character, it will not accept here. I hope it is clear now. So try to understand this. It matches one or more occurrences of preceding. B is a preceding for plus. So one or more occurrences of preceding means what B can be one or can be more between A and C. <laughs> so between A and C, Between A and C, just a minute. It accepts only B one or more occurrence like this. But it will, it will not allow any other character if you have. So for example, here we have B, but X also there, not accept. 7, not accept. Not accept this, not accept. But only here this two it will accept. And also here, every wherever in the line, if it matches, it accepts. So 18th line also it accepts here. Now let me write this now. See, for example, I'm using now A, B plus C. can see only one or more b's between a and c only those lines it match so this is about plus that is the behavior of plus right and what is square bracket means we just discussed that 0 hyphen 9 so it is actually same so here it matches any one character from the given list or range we can say for example list is something like this if i write a then a e i o u and then c there is a list now from this list it matches any one character like a a c a e c a i c a o c a u c but only one character from this list if i write a p c not accept because p is not there in the list if 
write a i u c not accept because between a and c two characters i u two characters let's say i am writing a a c now it accepts here there is a pattern last three between a and c one character from this list yes between a and c one character e is there it accepts so this is a pattern it is matching the pattern now same way hyphen means what let's say now we write something a to z this is a lower case any one character it will match from this lower case capital a to z this for upper case 0 hyphen 9 for digit so we do have a shortcut for this we can also use backslash d for digit and a to z capital a to z for alphabet a to z capital a to z 0 to 9 this order can be anything alpha numeric okay for example if i want to search only one digit between a and c so here we have right see now between a and c any one digit i want to search only one digit then what is the syntax now okay so for one digit between a and c we provide 0 hyphen 9 so what it matches now one digit it will match only a7 c it is friend but i want to match one or more then you can use plus one or more digit one or more digit now you can see between a and c one or more digit it is coming this two only we covered just now right so plus we understood and i am using combination with the square bracket So what is square bracket? It matches any one character. Now, what is curly brackets of M? This is some something like it matches exactly M occurrences of preceding. What exactly M occurrences means? Let's say for example, A B curly brackets of two and then C. So means Yam is something number, any number. I am just giving two. So means here, it will act. It will match exactly two characters. Two characters of B that is a preceding. So if I write A B curly brackets of four, then C exactly four B is between A and C. It accepts. Getting a point. Now tell me. how to search 10 digit number based on this now any 10 digit first tell me any 10 digit how to search let's say in this my my file here having something 3 4 5 3 digit number 7 6 3 4 digit number and the 10 digit number i'm writing 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 10 digit number and the same thing with some numbers i'm trying to change like this okay. so wherever 10 digit matches i want to search now how to search you know the syntax now okay so what is the first syntax to search only digit only digit 0 hyphen 9 or backslash d how many digits one digit so if i write if i write If I write zero hyphen nine, just zero hyphen nine, wherever one digit matches, it will print wherever one digit. Only one digit it matches, it prints. See, one digit it matched here. One digit it matched. See, 
from two digits also one digit it must it is printing wherever one digit but what is actually our requirement i want to match 10 digits ah 0 hyphen 9 curly brackets of 10 this for 10 digit now what is curly brackets it matches exactly m occurrences of preceding what is the preceding now digit that is 0 hyphen 9 curly brackets of 10 or backslash d curly brackets of 10 this is for any 10 digit number i am searching any 10 digit number now see again i am executing any 10 digit number from the file it is printing but now mobile number in india we discussed the number should starts with 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 Now tell me how we can do this. How we can do this now? Mobile number validation. What is the syntax now? You know the syntax now. The first digit should start with 6 to 9. And then after that 9 digits. Total 10. First digit, 6 to 9. So, 6 hyphen 9, you can use like this. And then 0 to 9 of 9, total 10 digit. If you want really line starts with something only this digit, then you can also use cap symbol outside this, which is a line starts with. But as of now, whatever we covered, using with that, you can simply write here. See now. I don't want to print all 10 digit number. So here it is printing 1, 2, 3 also. But I want to print only line starts with or the number starts with only 6 to 9 series and then followed by 9 more digits. So total 10. Now rerun it again. Now if you see here, it is only accepting this. So if you write the same thing with condition, what happens? Enter your, enter your phone number. And then we are applying this re.search for that. And then if, you, if user entered something, the number like 5 digit number, not accept. It's an invalid number. A number in case, if, even if it is a 10 digit number, but number not started with... 6 to 9 series, then invalid number. That is how the validation here. Right? And now, what is M comma N? So M comma N is nothing but minimum and maximum. See, curly brackets of M, it is exact. But now M comma N means minimum and maximum. So I want to match minimum M occurrence, maximum N occurrence. So IRCTC name validation, it is regex for this, this is the one. So something minimum two characters, maximum 15 characters. So how to write that? So just A to Z, capital A to Z, only for alphabet and then minimum of two characters maximum of 15 characters accepted that's it this is the one now this is the regex minimum two characters maximum 15 characters more than that not allowed if anyone entered one character not accept if anyone entered combination with the digit not accept only lower cases, upper cases with the combination 2 to 15 characters allowing. Or maybe like a name, like minimum 2 characters and maximum can be anything if you want to write. Then M comma, just M comma. So minimum M occurrences, 
and no limit for maximum. Like name validation again, minimum two characters but no limit for max, you can write to come. So you can try same way like vehicle number validations, email ID validations with this if you understand. Okay. This is the one we covered now. But, uh, see, as I told, regex is the wildcard characters and all, it's a lengthy concept. But whatever required based on that, based on that I explained here. So whatever the use cases here, we discussed something mobile number validation, name validation, the related wildcards we discussed. And uh, you understood now how to use regular expressions, how to search and display the data, how to search and substitute the data, how to search and split the data based on pattern, and then the wildcard characters behavior, some of the wildcards we discussed, and then we understood that. So let's say, for example, line pattern. I told line pattern, right? So line pattern, something we have a line starts with and lines ends with. Here it is. So lines starts with means, for example, assume I want to search data only wherever line starts with Python. So lines starts with, we use a cap symbol. Lines ends with, we use a dollar symbol. For example, here now, for example, see, So I don't want to print wherever Python matches from this file. Only something, some text I'm adding like this. Only line starts with Python I want to print. So here now, if you search for Python, wherever Python matches, it will print. Wherever Python matches, it prints. But only line starts with Python I want to display, then just provide cap symbol. So which is line starts with. See now, only line started with Python it print. Or I want to display only lines wherever ends with Python. So I'm only taking example based on the Python string. You can think whatever like if you want to start with line or lines with line. So line ends with means Python dollar. So wherever line ends with Python, only those lines it is printed. Assume that I want to print line contains only Python string. Line contains only Python, then cap dollar. It contains only, line contains only Python. So don't think that line starts with Python, ends with Python. For example, if I have a line like this, Python, then something Unix, then Python, it will not print this line. Because the syntax here, we provided cap Python dollar, which is exactly line contains only this particular string. Then in that case, how to get line starts with and lines end with? Then for that, you can use different options, okay? So that's the reason I told you should know all the wildcard characters. I'm using dot star for everything means dot star. Starts with Python, ends with Python. In between anything matches, dot star for anything. Again, you should know what is dot, what is star. We only covered plus, curly brackets, and then square bracket. But there are a lot of other wildcards. If you want to see that, you can go through here, Python, go to import re, import re, help of re if you check, you'll get this all the wildcard characters here, see. 
this is the one okay so here you can see the dot which we just discussed and start see this what is star plus we already explained so match one or more curly brackets of m comma n we discussed square bracket we discussed there are different wild cards you need to check but if you are aware of this for any patterns you can write it so now here i am searching for what line starts with python ends with python only those records i want to print see i hope it is clear now what is the importance of re module so this is again module with this module we are performing these patterns we are performing these validations we are performing this what like text manipulations so this is how the modules like importance here right i hope it is clear now any questions here anyone yes no little confusion right this concept yeah so if you know the wild card characters behavior it will be very easy to understand and uh, okay so i'll take next session like uh, maybe next week i'll update in the group saturday next coming saturday so the pending concepts again regex we covered right and this all self understandable things only working with json working with database this all things but anyway we will cover that also someone asked the comprehensions we will cover this part as well okay so next session we will schedule on next saturday 22nd maybe or 23rd i'll update one day before okay so we'll plan maybe 90 minutes or one and a half like two hour session and then we'll complete it any questions now anyone if no questions we'll stop today then thank you all then have a great day so i'll try to share this video recording maybe i'll upload in my channel youtube and then i'll share you you can go through that one more time thank you all then have a great day bye